Hey everyone, Fuse Man coming at you. I hope this video finds you doing super well. Now, as a practical follow up to our back end design video, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into multiplayer solutions. And this is going to be a part one of a two parter. And in this video, we'll be specifically taking a look at a broad overview of multiplayer solutions, do a little bit of comparative analysis here. And in part two, we'll practically go about using Docker, as I mentioned in the previous video. And I think that'll be a pretty good step to taking a look at how you could do, handle your own self-hosted solution. And we'll do that on Google Cloud just because I, I've been researching that a little bit. And if you are excited for this video as well as that next one, make sure to leave a like on this video as it really does help out the channel. And videos like this take a lot of time to research and develop to make them kind of concise for you guys. So to keep myself sane and not compare every solution against every solution, what I'm going to be doing is dividing kind of the solutions that I found into two groups. So one are gonna be managed solutions and the other is self-hosted solutions. And just to quickly define those, managed solutions is going to be solutions where everything is kind of set up for you in the cloud. They handle the scalability as well as finding the closest server for your users to actually connect to, and you just use a client SDK and that's it. Self-hosted is you will still get a client SDK, but you also are responsible for setting up your own servers yourself. Now, even though we're gonna be dividing these into groups, all of the solutions we're gonna be taking a look at kind of share some pretty common DNA. And I'm gonna be specifically looking at they all require for, at least for me, to have three features. So the first is a way to subdivide your players into different rooms. And even better if they provide matchmaking as a service for the solution to put players into rooms for the server. The second component is the actual game server. And specifically, we'll be taking a look at what is known as a message relay server, which is just a fancy way of describing the fact that I need to be able to send messages across all my players. And the last thing that I think of as a requirement is kind of having a client SDK that abstracts out the networking in a pretty seamless way. And specifically here, we'll be looking at Unity SDKs just because this happens to be a Unity channel. Now with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the first group, which is managed services. So managed services here, I'll go ahead and lay a bunch of those solutions that I found as I was doing my research on screen here. And I gotta say, so hard to, to kind of track down, which I'm generally surprised by. But I, I think hopefully this is a comprehensive list. But again, managed services are solutions where the backend is kind of pretty much abstracted away from you. And the solution in and of itself, you're gonna be paying a subscription and that subscription covers scalability, deploying servers into the correct regions or as many regions as they support at least for your players and making sure that you are always kind of connecting to the closest uh, server for your players. And then as a developer, all you need to do is integrate the SDK into your game. And once you do that, then you will now have successfully connected to their backend, especially if you put in the application credentials they provide. And at that point, at least the game server component should become a black box to you. Now there are pros and cons to this approach. And I've gotta be honest, like there are really only two core pros that stood out to me. So the first is you'll typically see a reduced development time. I, and I'd say typically because depending on the solution, it actually might, you might spend up more time doing extra dev work than, than that's not actually needed. And the other is you don't have to worry about maintenance as much because you're providing, paying for a subscription for the service, it's up to them as part of that service offering to provide you the, the maintainability of your servers. And generally speaking, if you're in the early stages of development and prototyping, I actually think this is a pretty good place to start. And I mean, as, as someone who was just kind of learning about the space in general, like several years ago, like that's literally where I started with Photons. You just create an account, get the free tier and you get going. You can get yourself a multiplayer game within a few hours or so. But for production, I think the biggest con is you don't really have control. And by that, it, that really comes in a few form factors. So 
you don't have control over where your servers are deployed. You don't really have control or visibility into how they're being deployed. And the, the last part would be you don't have control over the data flow. So yeah, all these messages are kind of getting back and forth and ultimately they're coming from your client. But because you don't own the gain server, at least directly, if you really want the data of what's happening in your individual game sessions, you need to duplicate that data and send that off to your own server. Uh, and I think owning that data flow is pretty valuable, especially when it comes to doing any forms of analytics and really understanding, uh, do I have players that are cheating? <laughs> do I have players that are improving on certain mechanics and doing things in kind of creative ways? And how can I make my own games and applications even better based on the the data that are that I'm seeing as players interact with my game? I think that data flow is very valuable and something that you might miss if you just go and use one of these managed servers without having a concrete plan on how you want to tackle the data. Another thing to keep in mind about managed services is just because you're using the service does not mean that you can completely uh, avoid yourself of backend development. Oftentimes, I mean, if we're taking a very concrete example here, so if we do want skill-based matchmaking, if you want that, then you still are responsible for one, keeping track of the player skill and updating that and maintaining that. At least none of these managed servers are responsible for that. They're just handling literally the some of them ha handle matchmaking. So for example, here I have Photon, GameSpark, and PlayFab. Those three will support matchmaking and tweaking, but you still need to provide the data for a given player on what their ELO score is before that they're able to handle it. Of course, some of these other ones here, like Normcore, for example, doesn't even support matchmaking. And as a result, uh, it's on you as the developer to support that, which either means you find a matchmaking service or you need to go ahead and set up your own servers. Depending on the solution, you might decide that, well, I don't know. I mean, if, I, if I'm gonna have to spend time on my own servers, maybe I should consider the whole stack. Now, you're, you're gonna have to do this on a solution by solution basis, but sometimes the solution might still be worth it. So in Normcore, if you really want state synchronization, so for example, if a player falls off and disconnects, that they're able to reconnect and regain the state, that could be useful. Or if you want physics simulations, that might be useful. And as opposed to developing that yourself, you could maybe consider just letting them handle the game server side. Something to consider. But if you're not using those features, maybe you should consider setting up your own server. But it's something that you should, on, on an individual game basis, really consider and think about because uh, at the end of the day, you're going to have to pay for this. And speaking of paying, in general, these managed services tend to be a little bit more expensive than if you had gone ahead and just self-hosted the solution yourself. Typically across the board, there, there are a few exceptions here, like Beamable, for example, that, that charges on a revenue basis. But in general, you're paying for CCU or concurrent users. And concurrent users is the number of users that are playing at any given time. And then these services kind of bucket them on how much you pay for, for that service. But game service in general, as, as we'll talk about a little bit later, can support a lot more than the typical concurrent user limits that are provided to you by these services. And so from, from a pricing standpoint, if you can find a self-hosted solution that is equivalent or meets your needs, it might be something that you want to consider as opposed to a managed service just so that you are paying less because at the end of the day, if it's eating into your profit, it's eating into your profit. So that's how I'd consider doing the cost analysis. And since we were, we're comparing to self-hosted, now is pretty, a good, pretty good time to segue into self-hosted solutions. So like before, I'm gonna list a few of those solutions here on the screen that I found in my research. And I think more than kind of looking at this list of self-hosted solutions and trying to determine uh, can it beat a managed service or, or not, I, I wanna kind of propose a few different questions here that I think you should 
start to ask as you're looking at these different self-hosted solutions that are out there to kind of help you narrow down on something that's very specific to your own application. Just a generic question that you should ask is, how do I need to host this self-hosted solution? So specifically here, what operating system do I need to use? And the only reason I really mentioned this is because Photon Server, which is their own version of self-hosting, requires Windows. And in general, I would say, do not use any sort of server, especially game servers, that require Windows, because you're going to have to pay a licensing fee just to manage that, and that drastically increases the cost of actually maintaining these. You want anything that's Linux-based, and generally speaking, if you're using Docker, that's going to be Linux-based. So that's really the kind of the generic route I would go down. The other consideration you gotta make is how do I install this? So I, I mentioned Docker earlier. I think if you have a Dockerized solution, that's great. Google Cloud, for example, goes ahead and provides an operating system that allows you to easily push out these containers onto the virtual machine as part of their compute engine. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want is to push a Docker container, have that get deployed onto these instances and be done with it. We don't want to be going through on each and every server and installing, for example, Node or Python and setting up the ports and everything. We want click, click, we're done. That simplifies our life. And I think it's that's a very important thing you got to consider to make sure your development time is simple. And then of course, at a technical level, I would ask what are kind of the features that are being used? So. For example, again, big at a technical level, is this solution multi-threaded, for example? Because if it's not multi-threaded, that means that each of my game servers is kind of running concurrently, and that limits the number of players that I can really put onto a given server. And from a cost perspective, it also means that I can't really scale out one given instance to be as big as possible so that I can run a bunch of different threads on it. And typically, again, bigger servers, your cost per player will tend to go down. And I think that's the, the core factor that you gotta keep in mind. But ultimately, these questions are, okay, are there features that can save me money as I go about setting up on the cloud? And I think that's really the bottom line that you wanna look for is, do I get the features that I need to minimize my development time and minimize the price that I end up paying? And speaking of price, I wanted to just quickly walk through how you can calculate the price for a self-hosted solution. So starting here on the Google pricing calculator, let's just get the estimate for one instance. So we'll be using the compute engine, which allows us to spin up a Docker image. And let's make sure to definitely use a Linux version. And then we'll just keep things simple with just one vCPU. Region really doesn't matter. We're not going to need a public IP address because we'll be setting up a load balancer as part of this calculation. And then how often you wanna use this. So if you don't plan to spin up the server constantly, you can play around with these numbers. But the cheapest option really is if you plan to support your game long-term, either pick the one or three year option for an extra discount. So just for simplicity, let's go ahead and pick three years and then we'll add that to the estimate. You'll see for this one vCPU, it'll cost us $11 per month. Now, let's also go ahead and, as I mentioned, add in a load balancer. So that is under cloud load balancing. You can go ahead and click on that. Set up a region. We don't need any forwarding rules as we'll just be using a public IP address. And then you just need to set up how much inbound data you expect to get. Now, this will depend on your game and how often you're passing around messages. I think a very simple estimate is you can go ahead and put in about 100 or so and we don't need any forwarding rules, and let's add that to the estimate. You can see that comes to a really tiny fraction, which is 80 cents per month. So this is, as you can see here, it's a global load balancer, which is going to be connected to all of the instances we spin up, and that'll pipe the traffic around, and so we don't need multiple of those, we just need one of those. We will need multiple virtual machines and compute engines, and to to get a sense of how many we need, we can head over to the Google Maps where the, all the data centers are. So in general, 
typically what, what will end up being played out is you want one for the west coast on the US, one for the east coast on the US, one for Europe, and then one for Asia and maybe one for Australia. But in the, in the very simple example, it's one, two, three, four. As you're starting out, it's really more than enough. So to that end, we actually just need four of these. So we can quickly edit that, increase that up to four instances, and you can see that our total comes to $44, $45 per month. Now you can take this and now you can map that price onto rough CCU. And here, this is not just per server. Each server can easily support thousands of players even on just one vcpu because we're literally just passing messages it's not like we're doing any very complicated calculations here so to, in that sense while the price here might roughly look the same as what you might see on some of the self-hosted services again keep in mind those are per CP ccu and this price is able to scale up and support a lot more and you have a lot more control here as to how much you want to keep up these servers how, how often how, how little how often you want if you want to scale it up scale it down based on demand and kind of peak usage etc etc you can you can handle all of that and it allows you to have that kind of finer grain control that you might not otherwise see in a managed service so yeah i think that covers a lot of different material that i wanted to go over here if you do have specifics, make sure to leave those down in the comments below. I think whatever the solution you choose, it really comes down to the cost analysis that you wanna do between development time and pricing. And the, the, obviously the extreme example is if you wanna build everything yourself, you'll probably finitely reduce the amount that you have to pay because you still have to pay for servers and keeping that optimized. But uh, I do think there is a consideration to be made for doing self-hosted to minimize kind of the price that you pay long term. So yeah, next video we'll go through actually deploying to the Google Cloud. But until then, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. This has been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.